What is up guys? I am Warmaster Moloch and this is an early game start guide to one of the toughest campaign starts left in Warhammer 2 and that is Karaz Akarak playing as either Grombrindle or Thorgrim Grudgebearer. So, if you've only ever played against the dwarfs and seen them as part of the Order Tide, you might be thinking, how can it possibly be tough? They're a really powerful faction. Well, in the early game, they are extremely vulnerable and the AI throws every cheat possible at you when you're playing as them. Bear in mind, I'm setting up this guide on legendary difficulty, so it's going to be as tough as you can possibly play it. Now, what makes them tough to start out as is that you are right next to what can become one of the other powerhouses of the game, Grimgore's Iron Boys, hidden away somewhere down here. That's where the Black Crag is, their capital. So, what happens is Grimgore invariably winds up waging war on you, he makes a beeline for you, and he declares a war. The war means that his armies double in size, and because he's Grimgore, he gets loads of Black Orcs, the AI gives him loads of money so he can send loads of armies against you, and you get pulverized pretty quickly. You can fight your way through, but it's hard. Extremely hard. So the old meta was always to do the traditional Warhammer Total War start, which is to take your starting province and get complete control of it. That's kind of a part of the way to do it now, but it's not really about holding these two smaller settlements at this stage. That actually causes you more trouble if you're looking to do that from the very start. What you really need to do is get a minor control here and then move fast and get down and take out the Black Crag. The reason for that being that that is where Grimgore recruits his Black Orcs from. And those Black Orcs absolutely trash you. They are the biggest problem when you are fighting against Grimgore's armies because they are more or less unkillable under his control for some reason. I mean, he obviously gives them buffs, but also they... It's almost like every Black Orc unit that you face has his The Immortals banner placed on it, but there's only one that really does have that on there. So they just don't seem to die, especially when you're using earlier units like Dwarf Warriors and Quarrelers. So you have to cut off the supply. Get to them before he can recruit too many of them, take out the Black Crag, and after that you'll only really be facing Boar Boys and Orc Boys and Biggins. Still pretty tough on legendary difficulty, but you can get through them. So without much further ado, let's get on with the first battle, which is pretty simple. But you do have to kind of pay attention while you're doing it. This army is not great. Thorgrim Grudgebearer's army is arguably better because he gets Grudge Throwers and extra Quarrelers. But we make do with what we've got. Obviously you can auto-resolve that, but you'll take more casualties doing it. It's better to fight it yourself. And we're going to do that. Okay, so we're going to take our ranged guys here, which is all of these. And put them roughly there, because we want the Iron Drakes to have a clear firing line. They do huge damage, but they need a solid firing line in order to do that. And then we're going to put Grombrindle there. So he's just about in range of the Iron Drakes. And as soon as he's engaged by the enemy, you can start baking them. We're going to move these over here. Gyrocopters aren't great, but they're a handy little distraction, so we're going to use them. And that's really about how you want to start it. Maybe pull these a little bit further forward. We're going to send these forward and get them to bomb the enemy. Actually, we're going to go to the side because we don't want to expose ourselves to too many shots early on. And then we come through there. Because with when you're dealing with these archers, it's just about keeping them out of their prime firing position. Fire, 
Now, a big part of what we're trying to do here is provoke them into coming forward. And this is really the only kind of ranged attack that we have. I say ranged, we're in the air. And that's a way that we can attack them safely. Now we're going to put some shots into these before they turn around and get their firing line right. Which they're about to do. Let them do their thing. We'll get another couple of shots off and then we'll move. Anytime you like, lads. Now we'll move around to here. And as you can see, the infantry has started to move forward because we've aggravated them enough that they're going to come. The Orc boys have turned around and started to chase aerial units. That's great. That means that we're only dealing with the general and two other units of... Or, well, one unit of Orc boys and one unit of biggins. And then just keep these distracted. It's very micro-intensive doing this. But it's effective. So for this kind of short-term battle in which we have a small army, you've got, to take your, you've got to take advantage of everything you've got. Right, let's shoot those. They're getting close. Now, as you can see, these gyrocopters are actually really squishy. So you've kind of got to babysit them. I'm not a huge fan of them, but they're in the starting army. I will use them while they're here until I can get better things. Obviously, iron drakes are definitely a better thing. And now everything here is crowding around Grombrindle and it's getting absolutely wiped. That's distracting the Arrow Boys. Let's bring these forward, get rid of this stuff. Okay, so we managed to trash them. We will send the gyrocopters around just to shoot him. And they've shattered, and they've shattered. We'll just shoot them on their way out. There you go. General's gone, so we won't have to deal with him in the follow-up battle. And we'll just make them come in. Skip around, make them miss their shots a bit. And those arrow boys will not last long under quarrel or fire. Base. 
And that's the army loss penalty. Easy win. Let's just finish them off as quickly as we can. Do as much damage to them as we can before they all get away. Uh, let's chase these down in melee with the gyrocopters instead. I doubt we can get anything else close enough to get in and help with this, but we'll try. Nah, they're moving too fast. There we go, that'll do. As you can see, no losses, and we did plenty of damage to them that we will be able to follow up on in the uh, second battle. So we're going to take the money here because obviously we didn't lose anything, so why not? Now for the follow-up battle, you go in and you attack the settlement first, not the army. The reason being that that has more troops. Let's just show you. It's got troops. Nothing in particular that's a problem there, but it's more than they've got here. So you soften them up first and then let the Arab boys come in when they're not really able to influence things because they may well route straight away. For here, I'm going to go Legendary Commerce, of course, because we're going to get down the blue line. It's very important that your generals have um, Lightning Strike before they start to face a green skin wa because lightning strike is one way that you can eliminate the wa reinforcements that come through now before we fight that battle let's just have a look at what we're going to do with karaz akarak so what we are going to do is we're obviously going to tier to it and we are going to get the gem mine shaft because obviously we're going to get those uh, research, we will go straight in for Master Crossbow. So six turns, it will give you Missile Strength for your Quarrelers, and it will reduce the recruitment cost for Quarrelers. That's very important, because we're going to be recruiting a lot of those. So, Attack Pillars of Grimgny. You can auto-resolve it. We're going to fight it manually, just to keep casualties to a minimum once again. Because the army is coming from over that side to the east, we're going to position ourselves over towards the west. Just to force them to move a lot further before they can engage us. Because we get all the advantage here. Especially against their archers, who are the biggest problem, frankly. Nothing else they've got is a problem. Nothing they've got at all is a problem, to be honest. But it's about getting the most done that we can. And of course, with no archers here, the gyrocopters get a free run at shooting these. They're sending more over this side, which is where we have like the least immediate firepower. So let's... Go in and stick some bombs on top of this. And then we're going to turn around that way. Oh, 
And then we'll shoot them in the back. How many kills do they get there? 26. Not bad. Not great. Keep moving them as far forward as we can at any given time, just so that we can get those shots into the back of them. We're going to turn around slightly here. Just to get ourselves squared up to them. And Captain Unit is already in really bad shape. They're now changing around their position. This is fine. Them mucking around is just giving us more shooting time with our gyrocopters. That's good. And the Iron Drakes will start up any second now. And those goblins are not going to last long against that. going to do is we are going to bring the iron drakes around to here to just bake these from the back and the sides bring the iron drakes around to here uh, the um, gyrocopters around to there just to shoot at those goblins A little bit of friendly fire, but that's okay. Bring the quarrelers back. Turn the iron drakes around. They've shattered. So if they swear I told them to attack that, but there you go.
And there's the army loss penalty. So both armies will be wiped out there. The garrison and the army stood outside. And there you go. That is all done. So we're going to occupy here. That army will vanish because we wiped it out. Okay, here we're going to go for reducing recruitment costs because we're going to be doing a lot of recruitment. Let's get rid of his advice quickly because we don't need that. Uh, and then what we're going to do in the turns after this is we're going to be going for Mount Squighorn and using it as a sack city. Basically, if you've never done that before, you just sack it repeatedly. Return, recruit, sack, return, recruit, sack, return, recruit. Just so it gives you a bit of extra money and more extra experience for your general. So we're going to end the turn now because there's nothing else to do here. So he's now ready. How can I help? And we sack it. Door resolve. Sack. There, we didn't need to fight it manually because the bloody spears are not going to be back for a while. Nip across to here. There we go. Another turn we can start building up this so we can get quarrelers. More quarrelers, that is. So this is going to be a bit sort of stop, start, stop, start. Uh, here we're going to go for Grungni's, te uh, Grungni's teachings because we want upkeep reduction and research rate improvements because that will make us better overall. Also reduces recruitment cost and the construction cost for buildings. That's great at this stage because money is tight. So, sack. And you go back. So right now, you might be wondering why I'm not taking the opportunity to recruit dwarf warriors considering, look at that. Armor 85, Leadership 84, Melee Attack 22, Melee Defense 40. Great units, right? No. They're actually not. So that's why I'm not doing it. it is time. And I'll show you why in a battle later on. So, our recruitment cost has gone down now for our ranged units, and we're working on improvements to them. So we're going to upgrade them so that we can start recruiting ranged units. We're going to get the siege workshop so that we can get grudge throwers, because they're excellent early game. And then we're going to get ourselves extra growth, because growth is good. Back again, and end the turn. Now, in one turn, we will be able to start recruiting our quarrelers and our grudge throwers. 
and those are a game changer. You're going to get replenishment rate here, and the next thing you'll get is lightning strike, and then we'll start to boost tactician and thunder after going through inspiring presence. We're not going to bother with that, but a non-aggression pack with Jafar is obviously good. They're buddies, and they might potentially help us with the bloody spears. Now, something else you can be doing as well. It's not something I concentrate on, but it is an option. You can go into your diplomacy, and you can just ask Barakvar for money. And sometimes they will give you it. Not this time. Let's see if Jafbar will. Not yet. But you can get money out of them, potentially. So. Now, when we finish each turn, we're going to do some recruitment inside Pillars of Grungni. So here we're going to get two units of Quarrelers, one unit of Grudge Throwers. We're not going to build up Pillars of Grungni because the priority is building up Karazakarak by a mile. We want that to have the best garrison possible. Now this garrison is already pretty solid, but when you go up a tier, it, all, it obviously improves. You'll get a Thane in there for a start that will help to... Um, hold out the enemy in the case of any sieges and it's just generally a better garrison you also get hammerers which makes your garrison more durable Grombrindle now has lightning strike and we're in really good shape for anything that shows up next turn bear in mind that the bloody spears very rarely walk round they'll usually underway pass but sometimes they'll force march to squidhorn sometimes So Grimgor has confederated the Red Fangs. That means he's right on our doorstep now. So we have to be ready. Again, two units of Quarrelers, one unit of Grudge Throwers. And here we're going to go up to... I say go to large-scale shell production, which is 21 turns away. That just um, gives you more artillery ammo and less upkeep. And in the meantime, you will also get less upkeep for artillery and lower recruitment costs and ammunition for the missile infantry and reduce reload time for your quarrelers. All in all, going through there is very healthy. We don't want to build anything else up because money's tight. And also these two settlements can easily fall while Grombrindle is down dealing with Black Crag. Now keep an eye out because sometimes Gotrick and Felix show up here and you can activate them as a second army that will not be hitting you with supply lines. So you can just give them a bunch of troops and they will help you hold out. It doesn't seem to be happening here so far. It usually happens quite early if it's going to. But you never know, they might turn up. It'll be nice if they do. It'll save us a bit of money. But either way, I will show you some defensive strategies. Now, I know it's repetitious, but this is how it works. Yeah, it's a repetitive style, but you kind of have to follow this so you're ready when you take Grimgore on. Because make no mistake, he's coming for us.
and the bloody spears have sent an army round on force march to Mount Squighorn. That is absolutely fine. I will go for relations with Shufbar because we don't get much from those mines at the moment anyway. Let's see if those relations mean that they'll give us some money. Not yet. And Barakvar, will they? See, they want an alliance with us, so they probably will, because they've got better terms. See? There you go. So, let's fight this army. Again, we can... I mean, I could auto-resolve that, to be fair. But I would rather show you a fight with this army while we've got the chance a little field battle and again it'll minimize our casualties we're not likely to be attacked by anyone else at this stage but let's take a look at it okay so that corner is okay that corner is crap so we're gonna go for this corner very similar strategy here except obviously we're quite a bit better equipped than we were. Now, ordinarily you might even say, why don't we go with a checkerboard formation here? You can do that. Personally, I am not going to bother. I am going to go three units there, and then I'm going to kind of try and crescent them. In fact, I'm going to do this manually rather than straight drag and drop. And I'll put the Iron Drakes and the uh, Miners with Blasting Charges there. Those there. Those there. And those there. Nice little crescent there. Gromby can go there. Miners there. Dwarf Warriors there. And honestly, that should do most of what we need it to. Um, we're going to use our Gyrocopters here just to aggravate them. Right. There's a lot of them, so they're liable to form a juicy blob here to make these bombs a bit more effective. Let's head across there and see if we can catch them in one. That looks really nice. If they can hold that together, that would be perfect. Let's go down here. That could be okay. It's not. Okay, let's go back up here. They do like to muck you about with this stuff. Do you know what that'll do? How many kills do we actually get with that? It's alright. So I'm going to head over here because these wolf riders... Ah, there we go. I was looking for these. Because nasty skulkers are a pain in the behind for dwarfs. They do a lot of damage. So they got some Goblin Rider archers. They're also a pain in the behind. Oh, and they've hit us with that bloody thing. I always forget that. That is actually why um, Nasty Skulkers are a pain in the behind. I've kind of fallen for it. As I mentioned before, I'm not overly enamoured of um, Gyrocopter. So I'm not especially worried if they do rout in this battle. But we can still use them. They're useful enough. To keep around. Nothing can stop us. And there we go. The slowdown. Go. Stopped in due time. Out. So the reason for the crescent is because I want people firing into this kind of area. They don't have to be right next to the line like that because they won't get taken out from the side. The enemy won't typically come around the side like that. So we're going to go like that. And then these guys are going to start shooting to the flanks because they've got that little arc available to them. 
in their firing range. And we want these to fire into strong units rather than weak ones. So let's go for, let's try and take those nasty skulkers out. say let's shoot at him and we're taking these out in really short order here this is not a problem at all um, as you can see the quarrelers are doing a huge amount of damage on the approach and the grudge throwers are mowing units down here the Nasty Skulkers just triggered their little ability because they're like that. Let's go to... Let's go for the Archers because they're probably going to do more damage than anything else right now. And then Gromby, I'm just going to have engage them so we can get them to blob up. Now, see, some Goblins got through here but they aren't going to last long against Quarrelers. Because quarrelers are actually very durable. Okay, one of our gyrocopters got taken out. Let's go and melee attack them just to get them out of it. See? The quarrelers routed those goblins in melee and we didn't lose anyone. Plus they've been killing people by shooting them as well. And we won the battle. Easy stuff. And there we go. A little bit of money and some experience. We're going to sack it again. And we're going to move out again. Now that what I showed you a second ago... That which I showed you. God, great grammar there, Moloch, seriously. Uh, is why I have a tendency to do this. Bye bye. I am the white dwarf. I rely on the quarrelers because they actually get more kills overall than dwarf warriors in basically every situation. Especially once you start to add things like tactician and you boost their missile strength. They can hold the line against most troops. And while those troops are approaching, they will also shoot them. So it's a win-win. So again, two lots of quarrelers, one unit of grudge throwers. You know the pattern by now. Still no Gotrek or Felix. Obviously they come together, but you know what I mean. So Grimgor has declared war on Barakvar. That always happens. It's just one of those things that's quite useful because it actually stops him from coming at you sooner. Okay. And now, here's the thing. This is why Sack City and Mount Squighorn is so good. Because if we had just occupied it, they would have an army up here building up and then they'd recruit another army up here building up. Instead, they've made the mistake of recruiting a general here and starting to recruit troops there. And we just do that to it. So it slows down their development. And obviously, Gromby is getting seriously good at this fighting business. We're going to get one more unit of grudge throwers and two more units of quarrelers. It's almost as if there's a plan. And then next turn, we're actually going to take this. Let's see if anyone wants to give us any money. Shifbar, are you feeling generous? Let us feast and drink. No reason for it. No. Now they really want an alliance with us, but they don't seem to have that much money. That's okay. Uh, maybe a defensive alliance, and we'll get some money out of them for it. Because money is always tight at this stage. We're not going military alliance, though. 
and it's not worth it for 300 or 600 whatever it was they're offering let's have a look at the empire let's see if we can get them to go for a defensive alliance if we declare war on the skull smashers i'll ignore that all right they're good friends let's go for military access if they give us some money indeed and that will increase our relationships with them. And eventually we might be able to get a defensive alliance before they wind up, we wind up at war with Grimgore. Because if he declares war on us first, then that means the Empire comes in. And that would be very useful. But it usually doesn't happen. It's just an option I'm throwing out there for you. Maybe you'll be luckier with this than I am. And they've done it again, see? That's another army that they're going to have to wait a turn to recruit. And this time we take it. And we got the Silver Road. You go for Empower the Guild so you get extra growth. You demolish this because you don't need it. And you get the money back for it. And then you get Gromby, another unit of Quarrelers. There is a case to be made that, honestly, these Gyrocopters aren't worth keeping. But they can be useful, so I keep them around. One extra unit of Quarrelers won't be missed that much. Uh, another four turns, it'll actually be less than that because this commandment will come in. We'll be able to start Tier 3 in Karaza Karak, which means that it's harder for Grimgore to take it when he comes for us. And he's going to be coming for us soon. Someone is raiding Mount Squighorn, so they do have another army there. It's not something I'm especially worried about. Because over here, we haven't had um, Gotrek and Felix show up. That is absolutely fine. We are going to recruit a general. It means it will cost us more money, but it is what it is. Grimnir or Fleetfoot. Both of those suck, quite frankly. We'll go for that ward save then. Him there. And we're going to get ourselves some quarrely boys. Whereas Gromby is going to go down here and he's actually going to get himself into a quarrel because he's just that type of dwarf. So here's reality. That army there, whatever is coming from Mount Squighorn, that is going to be enough to whack us. We, we uh, it, at, um, at Mount Squighorn and Pillars of Grungni. We've got no chance of defending them. We're all about defending Karazakarak and taking Black Crag. Because that's where the money is. And that's how we recruit our armies. No. No, we're going to just not do that then. We don't need to start a war early with Grimgore unless we absolutely have to. I am the white so we're going to go to there. That army is almost certainly coming for us, by the way. For the wisdom of the bloody spears around here, whatever. They have a grudge now. They've caused a grudge. Whatever. Doesn't matter. We're in negative income. That is okay because the Black Crag is a very valuable settlement from a financial perspective and a tactical perspective. Great 
Greetings, honorable. Defensive Alliance payments. Do you know what? I'm just going to try and get them to give me money. And they're still not going for it. Okay, there's no sense provoking Grimgore by making any kind of deal with them. Scabby Eye have been destroyed. That's good. Public order. I really wish you could go and check your public order before this. I don't worry too much about public order. Uh, about relations with Jofbar. It's okay. Now that there is enough to comfortably hold Karazakarak. That's a lot of shooty boys right there. And then once you can tier 3 this place, which will happen next turn, you obviously start building it up, you'll get a better garrison. But in the meantime, that's pretty bloody good right there. Now, this one... He can't get to Black Crag this turn, but he can get to there. And he can go into ambush stance so that Grimgore doesn't know he's coming. Grimgore is at war with Clan Vulcan, which means I believe he's heading round in this direction. So he's got some distractions going on, which is good. He hasn't declared war on us yet, which is also good. What? And here we go. Expensive and necessary. I'm here Start building up Karaz oh, Karak to tier 3. And let's get ourselves a black crag. Surprise, Grimgore. And I'm going to show you, this is a pretty decent garrison overall for this stage of the game. But it's it's easy to beat, and I will show you how. Okay, so you've only got one Lord Stroke Hero to tank shots from two towers here. So the way you deal with that is you kind of queue them up. So that they're all to the side here. Go through. Three and three. I'm going to stick them in a big blob here because the AI is not intelligent enough to fire its artillery into there, which would be tragic if it were because, my God, would that ever cause us some trouble. Put them there. They want to fire at the gyrocopters. They can. In fact, we're going to send the gyrocopters around there. So, artillery... Goes for that tower. That tower is not firing, but we want to take it out anyway, just to be safe. Okay, so these are over here, so we can use these if we choose to go and deal with the um, the goblin rock lobbers. They're not actually a huge problem, to be fair. You can deal with them just by using your... Uh, by using Grombrindle to waste their ammo. Let's bring these all back here, and we'll put them into one unit now. And they've brought some units outside, which is very generous of them, because it means we can shoot at them. But they've stayed outside of our range, so they're going to get back inside. That's fine. Let's aim for these arrow boys here. And now those...
And the importance of aiming for these guys that are on top of the gate is that we're getting double hits here because they're also damaging the gates themselves. So they'll bust open the gates for us at the same time as they're also hitting the unit. There you go. And the unit's taken a beating. So let's go for those next. And I'm going to do as much damage with these as I can before I send the gyrocopters in. Because then they're less likely to get shot up by anything because we'll have dealt with the archers. for them. They've managed to like get themselves into really weird setups here. So let's start getting them into group order again so it doesn't drag out while we're moving our troops around. We obviously want to go and take out those arrow boys, but we've got to deal with the goblin rock lobbers first. So as I say, you can just put Gromby there and have him go back and forth aggravating them, but we've still got gyrocopters, so why don't we use those? The only things they have to fear are archers, really, and the archers are all here. Okay, let's slow this down so that we can hit them with the bombs. Not a great shot, but it was a shot. And they do have some boar boys there. I've taken out one of the rock lobbers. They are shooting at us now at point blank range, so let's just make them turn around a bit before they can actually properly hit us. Nothing can stop us. Like I say they have no answer to this. They literally just have to keep moving the uh, the rock lovers around in a hope of being able to hit us. But we've taken out another one. And I'm going to speed this up. And they're down to one. And the rock lobbers are now basically finished. We've destroyed all of their siege apparatus. Their artillery apparatus, I should say. So we don't care about the crew. They'll be shot down easily. That means we can start moving these over to... Shoot down some stuff here. So we're going to go for the Black Orcs here first. Let's come around to there.
They're not arcing their shots very well, so let's go for... Let's put them into these Black Orcs from the side. It's doing a lot better. And now we want to come over to here. If we can get rid of that one unit of our boys there, we will have complete freedom of the map. They're actually hitting the Black Orcs instead. Let's just get rid of the Arrow Boys, shall we? There we go. And they've shattered. So, we bring these round to here. And we're going to start sideswiping these. It's a long-winded business finishing off a big siege in Warhammer 2, but... It is nice when you get the final effect. And now they're going down. They're just very, very, very durable Black Orcs. And that's why you want as few of them as possible in Grimgore's army. So you take out Black Crag while you can. sending these round to here. That's very nice of them because that makes them easier to hit. And the AI's already agreed with us. Victory is in our grasp. And we've still got nine units of quarrelers to get firing here. Let's see if we can get that one black orc gone. Nah, he's being a pain. It's fine. Let's just come to here. Where's their general gone? He's gone all the way back there. That's fine. To be honest, by the time he comes back, we may well have already won the battle. Slow going, taking out big bosses just because of shields and business like that, but we've pretty much broken through all of his defences now. Start sending these forward. They're done. Move them back and disband the group. Just going to finish off that one black orc there. Let's shoot out the crew of the rock lobbers. Just that will give us a little bit of bouncer power. Then they're easy meat. They're a very easy mark for quarrelers. As you can see, they're just hanging around here just because we've got the. Uh, the gyrocopters there. Finish off this unit. And now let's go in for the boar boys. They are an easy mark for quarrelers. They get absolutely shredded by archer fire, crossbow fire. I mean, they're not even allowing to like fire into the main bulk of the unit, and they're still trashing it. Let's 
let's pull them a little bit further forward so we can get some more arc on those shots and get them into the heart of the unit. There we go. And there you see what that did. And that's the army loss penalty. Those units there weren't even a factor. And we have the Black Crag. Zero losses too. So that army is ready to rock and roll with anything that Grimgore sends to try and take that place back. And there you are. We are going to loot and occupy it because it's an expensive place. Lots of value in looting it. Now, you want to get rid of something here. I'm going to say get rid of the public order one. And we'll repair it. And we want to put walls up here as soon as possible. It's a bit annoying that they've had that there. So we're going to have an imminent rebellion here. But if they want to try and besiege Karazakarak, that's absolutely fine. They've got no chance of winning that with a Greenskin Rebellion. And Gromby now has even stronger Quarrelers. And we're going to end the turn. The Bloody Hands have done some serious damage to Barakvar there, but Barakvar still have Varenka Hills Welcome. and Barakvar itself. They will clearly give us something for the Defensive Alliance there, because the, this is the thing. The AI's attitude to us has changed dramatically, because we are now in possession of two very significant settlements. So now it's like, they're big boys now. We we definitely want to be allied with them. So you get the walls for the Black Crag because you want to hold Black Crag. So the sooner you get a garrison there of quality, the better. This is too far away to take. Oh, it's too far away to get a some assistance from the uh, garrison. So you hold for now. And I'm going to get another couple of units of Quarrelers. That will put us very close to negative income, if not slightly into it because of the supply lines. But it's okay. And we're just going to hold on here until this place is walled up. Anyone who comes by, we can fight them with the army we've got here. No problem. Even Grimgore. We've lost the trade agreement with Barakvar, so that means we'll definitely be in negative income now. Is what it is. Barakvar does not last very long. And I should, I made a mistake there by not arranging the defensive alliance with money sooner. Because they might not have enough money now. So, let's have a look at that. Yes. that yeah, their strength rank is tanking. You can get a confederation there. Which will get you another settlement, another settlement that can be tier 5, another provincial capital. No one is coming for the Black Crag at the moment. The walls are repairing. And I wouldn't rate their chances of getting through here in the slightest. Let them try. You could actually sally out with what you've got there and this. Like that greenskin army would not stand a chance. They come in and come in and attack. You will batter them. In fact, I am going to go into ambush stats there, so that when they try it, we will wreck them. And I am going to say do the same at Black Crag, because then we can start to lure armies towards us. Now the advantage of that is we're in negative income now. It's not by much, but we can force them to come at us. And we will kill them in the field because they don't think anyone's here or here. So we can sucker punch them. Bloody Spears have made an appearance again. We're not going to confederate with Barakvar, even though that's a useful settlement to have. 
It's not very well developed. Why bother? Let's just see if we can get some money out of them. Honor to your ancestors. Not by me. Let's offer them a defensive alliance. Because sooner or later, all those greenskins are going to join up together anyway. So, who cares if we offend them now? So we've got money out of Barakvar that deals with our deficit for a little while. Let's see if Jufbar will join in. So they won't give us any gifts. But we can... Get that out of them. I have very little interest in these, but whatever. I frequently find myself at war with them for whole campaigns. So financially, that gave us a big lift. And I don't fancy their chances against us here. And saying that, because that's a large army, I'm not going to go into ambush stance there. We know that's coming, but I don't want to be having to deal with reinforcements coming from Karazakarak. Let them besiege it. We'll sally out if we have to. At least then all of our forces will be together. Hopefully they'll attack us this turn. We've encountered Clan Eshin. They want a military alliance with us, but we're not going to go for that. Let's see, though, if we can talk them into giving us money. That's fine. Yeah, we knew that was going to fall. We don't care. I think we need to worry too much about leadership. Let's have the public order. This is the thing that's really causing us trouble. It's the fact that we're being raided by these rebels. But, is what it is. Black Crag is one turn away from having walls, which is the point at which we can start to get a bit ambitious and head out and start attacking them. I think that's Grimgore over there, attacking Crookback Mountain. Because if I'm not mistaken, he is... At war with Eshin. No, he's not. Not yet. He's at war with Knights of Kalador. Someone is laying siege to Crookback Mountain, which will be Skaven held. What other faction is he at war with? Clan Vulcan. So that Clan Vulcan are holding Crookback Mountain. Okay, so Grimgore himself might be round there. That is fine, because we can take the opportunity to go around and deal with all of this and knock him out of other territory. We have encountered the Knights of Kalador. Is that them there? Okay, yeah, that's the, it's the Knights of Kalador who are attacking, who are attacking Crookback Mountain. Okay. There's a few different ways it can go in these scenarios. Okay, not worried about that, and they only sacked Squighorn there. Okay, they have besieged it, so we're ready to go. Black Crag is under control, basically. Bad public order, but under control. It might even be being raided. That's okay. Let's just deal with this situation. See what the army's like. I mean, it's solid, don't get me wrong. It's not a terrible army they've got there, but we are much better. Let us fight it. Oh, let's have a look at the map as well. Just out of curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. 
So reinforcements are going to be coming from here. That is a really awkward spot for them to be coming from just because we can't really use this corner because, well, it's because it sucks. <laughs> um, but that's okay. We will fight where we have to. Let's pull these deeper. Oh, they've come in over there. That's slightly awkward. In fact, let's, in that case, go over to here. And then we'll bring the artillery to there. Put the general there. We'll put Thunderers there and there. Nothing can stop us. Thunderers. And then we're going to put... Let's put the Hammerers on this flank. The Dwarf Warriors in the center. And we'll put the... Miners over here for this flank. Turn them round to there. Don't want to be flanked there, so let's just get round that. Obviously, it's a pain in the ass that they're being given that massive range boost so they're able to hit us with their rock lobbers, but there you go. The battle itself is going just fine. Let's turn these round. Let's get the general. And I'm just going to send someone over to walk towards that. They've managed to get in on our Thunderers, but it's okay. They're only doing it with goblins. Now that union's uh, that union that unit is getting shredded, but we don't care because it's from the garrison. 
What matters here is we want to kill as many of these rebels as we can during this battle. Because it's going to be hard to ch for us to chase them down when you consider that most of this army is not actually going to be able to leave the settlement. So we're going to f shoot out as many as we can. Can we get any more with that? And that's that. So no losses for our actual army, a hell of a lot of kills for them, and relatively few losses for the, uh, for the garrison too. But this army has been absolutely shredded. Yeah, they've lost a lot of units there, including most of their pace. We don't particularly need replenishment for our main army, so let's take cash there because we need it. Okay, so we can look at taking that out. Let's have a look and another quick look at what they've got left. The rock lobbers are a pain. But we will shoot the hell out of the rest, I would say. So let's go and fight them. We will go for Root Marcher. What else does he get here? So he'll get Lightning Strike in the second tier. Okay. Yeah, you can auto-resolve that. But I think we'll get fewer casualties by fighting it manually. I actually don't think they're likely to come forward. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But I have a feeling that they won't. Uh, we will go for a corner, of course. And this time we will checkerboard. Just to be sure. Bring those forward. If they don't come forward, I will use the general to waste the ammo of the rock lobbers. Let's see if they do. They're not excellent, so let's turn that round. Send him forward and let them do their thing until they have no ammo left because they've got sod all else of value to worry about.
Now, let's see if they attack. They probably won't. I think they're going to sit there. And we don't have any longer range projectiles to prevent that, so we are going to have to come forward and make them attack. So, head forward to there. We'll just gradually edge our way forward until they start to get shot and come forward. Saying that, I don't especially want to go to there, so because just because of the trees. So let's go to here, because that gives us a bit of protection from these rocks. Saying that, we're not quite good enough with range to still have those as flank guards when we move forward. So everyone's in place there. I like that line a lot better. Let's go to about there. Okay, still got a ways to go. Let's go to there. I don't want to push too far forward. We want to be in position and shooting them from as far away as possible. Okay, he's getting shot now. That's okay. I can dodge their ammo if needs be. And now they'll start to come forward, so I'll slow this down. And as you can see, they're routing super quickly. No melee infantry required here. It helped having some for the last battle, but look at how many of them died. Even hammerers were dying in that battle. Meanwhile, the quarrelers were doing the majority of the killing. That is that. Easy. Three losses there. Obviously it was a badly weakened army, but theoretically speaking you would assume that you'd need some kind of melee infantry there just to hold things out. Well, no you didn't. Take the money. Move. Summon me if you dare. And there we go. So here, hmm. Their actual uh, skill trees are lousy. Yeah, you just need to get to Lightning Strike ready to deal with Waz, but the skill trees suck. So we will go for Mason, because what the hell else is there? And I'm going to recommend getting a couple of units of... a few units of Grudge Throwers, because that will enable you to take out a hell of a lot of force here. As a roaming army, Black Crag now has walls so you can move out from there so that's pretty much the video guys the reason why i went this far is that obviously you're gonna have a rebellion at this stage so i wanted to show you how to deal with it 
it's dealt with. We didn't have Gotrick and Felix show up, which made it slower and more expensive, but even then, we were still fine. So, we now hold the Black Crag, and Grimgore is cut off from his Black Orc supply. We hold Karazakarak, and that is obviously our home stronghold. It's about to hit Tier 3. From there, you're in a strong position to move on and start to have a successful campaign, just because you have one strong army there, and a developing strong army there. You'll be able to move out, very likely be able to take out the um, the Bloody Spears just with this. And this obviously can go out and start to wage war on Grimgore. So that is as good a start as you can get. Now it's a long way from being a settled campaign. You're guaranteed to win it. That's just not how it works because over here, you've got those dirty, dirty rat Skaven from Clan Eshin who will start to bombard you with stacks. But that is a video for another time. So I hope you find this useful. As I say, it applies for Grombrindle. It also applies for Thorgrim Grudgebearer with slightly different tactics. If it's helped, um, I'd really appreciate you leaving a like or subscribing. Um, feel free to leave any suggestions in the comments section for other campaigns that you would like some help with. And yeah, I will see you on the next one. I will very likely be continuing this exact campaign in a future live stream. So if you liked watching this, stay tuned for that as well. Thank you very much, guys. See you soon.